Hi, I'm Robert Dutt for ChannelBuzz.ca, joined today by Mark Ensweiler, Channel Chief for uh, Red Hat. Mark, thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Robert. Um, Arun Oberoi, the, the overall sales chief, talked about uh, going to 100% touched by channel with the business. I know it's at, uh, it's at about 65% now or thereabouts. Can you, uh, can you talk a little bit about the 100% the commitment, sort of what that touched by channel means or touched by partners means? Well, actually, I haven't compared my notes with Arun on this, but I, I will tell you this. We are actually about 65% today in a traditional measure of channel participation, which is invoice. They put the order in, we invoiced them. Uh, there are certainly a much higher percentage of our partners that are involved in transactions where they may be subcontracted to for services. And, and so when Arun talks about the 100%, I mean, uh, I think that's a visionary statement, but the reality is it's it, it's much higher today than the 65. We will drive the core indirect business, and this year our goal will be, and our year starts March 1st, will be to drive it to uh, as near to 70% as we can get it. Um, obviously, that's driven by a couple things. Uh, it Certainly getting to just a pure number on a transactional side, that's pretty easy, but we were really doing a mapping the partners, following a philosophy that says, you know, let's go with, as you know, we've announced four new technologies. Mm -hmm. Let's go with a more narrow focus. Let's concentrate our investments, and, and that business will be driven up. So I think it, it really comes back to the point that if you look at, you know, is there any transactions that Red Hat really does from start to finish? You know, we do 100% of the service. We do 100% of the selling. We do 100% of the influencing. Uh, there may be a, some, mm -hmm. uh, but when you think of influence, when you, that we get from a lot of our big SIs. If you think about where we subcontract services out, where it's on our paper, but we have a partner driving the services, uh, the number's much higher than 65 today. So that's really what he's talking about that says it's very difficult for any vendor to do 100% of the touch, right? right. But, uh, and so he's driving, and, and it's been a very refreshing uh, change for us because he's really driving the company and our field team to say, look, you know, in the end-to-end -end transaction, Partners, in many cases, bring more of the capabilities than, than we do. So that, that's what we meant by it. Thank okay. You. Um, you know, you mentioned the new technology areas. Certainly, you guys have been uh, expanding, and, and a concept I've heard from uh, from partners a few times is the idea that you know they're they're really starting to embrace and accept the fact that it's it's more than than an enterprise Linux company at this point. Um, can you talk a little bit how's the how's the process going in terms of getting partners on board and sort of selling across the stack and and getting sort of the the broader solution story uh, out to the partners and where does it go from here for you guys? Okay, Robert, that's a great question. Um, so let me, just a little history. If we go back even as recent as two years ago, we may have bought some technology, but it wasn't really available yet or running on our current releases of RHEL, et cetera. So we, at that point, we really had a, probably a two-by-three uh, business, you know, a couple technologies, middleware and RHEL, and three primary routes. We had our OEM routes, our distribution, our direct. Uh, if you look at where we are today, we have a six-by-six six route, <laughs> or matrix, excuse me, Six primary technologies, six routes. How do we get there? You know, I will tell you, the acquisition of these technologies is driven by the customers. You know, for us to go and have a point solution on Linux and a point solution on middleware, and they're like, hey, guys, we bought your product, we've used it, we've road tested it, we're happy. What's next? You know, what's your virtualization play? What's your storage play? So that drove us to a lot of these acquisitions. And obviously, as we try to on-ramp those, Again, if you think about it, it puts a lot of strain on your sales capacity on your team, and this is why the partners play a more a very important role. If you think about those technologies, they're already very knowledgeable. There's a huge skill set out there around storage, virtualization, et cetera. So what we've done is was we've gotten this technology. We're saying, okay, what partner strategy do we want to implement with this? So we've decided, Robert, that what we're going to do is let's start with a less is more strategy on some of these new technologies. So while we may have 3,000 partners in Europe and 5,000 worldwide, we would be much more narrow in our selection and, and build pillars of expertise, uh, even with middleware, storage, et cetera. So you go with fewer partners, you build your reference and use cases, then that creates an on-ramp for you for the rest of the channel. So a um, lot to do now, lots of technologies, a lot coming at one time. We just bought a management virtualization management tool, Manage IQ. Uh, less than a month ago, so there's a lot of this, and that's the approach we're going to take. So silo out the best partners for that technology who have the end-to-end -end solution capability, who have the services capability. In many cases, there's SIs who say, well, here's some solutions built that we want to build on your virtualization, et cetera. So much more disciplined approach. 
then we were just selling the, the primarily the Unix product. All right. The Linux, not Unix. As, uh, you know, you, we're heading into, um, well, we're well into uh, 2013. We're heading into your new fiscal year. Uh, what are sort of your, what are your top priorities on the channel side um, as, as we start this new year and as we head towards a new year for you guys? What sort of, what are you, what are you focusing on? What would you like to see partners focusing on? Okay. Um, so the message to the partners is pretty clear. And I've been pretty consistent and probably a little boring because I keep hitting them with the same thing. But there's three primary focuses, and I'll tell you what we're doing. So the first one is, um, we always want our route business to grow faster than the company. Uh, we have been doing that. We I expect that we will continue to do that because we want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. So, we, and by the way, we need the routes to be the growth engine. Two, uh, we're blessed with routes who have really embraced us, have brought us in thousands and thousands of net new customers every year. Uh, we want to continue that. So we don't want them to take the foot off the throttle on that one because that's obviously a leading indicator for us of future business, right? We're in with the renewal business subscription, net new customers is kind of the lifeblood. So they've done a great job for us on that. The third one is um, renewals. You know, I always say embrace the model because, you know, renewals is not something that's really intuitive to a lot of people. They, a lot of people put the word renewal around stuff when it's really, you know, I'm selling a maintenance agreement. But, you know, we are, ours is a pure renewal. Right? So if you paid 100000 last year for your subs this year, it's 100000 And there's probably only a few, there is only a few companies that are really in that model. So it's not, and we, we're willing to do it for the partners, but renewals is critically important. Uh, and embracing the model, it's kind of like lifetime dancing lessons. You're never too good, right? And, uh, and then what I would tell you from our perspective, and, what, and so we ask that for the partner, and what we're going to come back with them is to say, look, we've been very clear with our strategy. Is we onboard new technology, we're going to take this, Concentrated approach in terms of less partners is more. Not that ultimately everybody can play, but we're going to do this. We concentrate our investment, and we put an enablement team in place that says you know, we, we can't go out to the partners and say, here's all this technology, come and sell our stuff. We have to make it very easy for them to be enabled. So we put a team in place, 24 people, a lot of money, and we have four disciplines for them. You have salespeople, they go down this curriculum. You have pre-sale, they go down this curriculum. You have technical down this curriculum and delivery people down this curriculum. We will share our IP from a services side. So, again, this is all about – that's our commitment back to the point. Okay there, Robert. <coughs> yes. Don't pull up lame on me here. Okay. <laughs> no, so th that's really what we're committing back to them. And, you know, we believe that the route model we have, we're always guarded against protecting the margins in the growth of the revenue. So every conversation I've had in the last few days is I want to make sure the margins are there. So we're very careful with the partners we bring in. Um, so that we're not driving down the, and eroding the economic model that we have. Sorry for a long answer. But. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Uh, you touched on enablement, and that's, um, that's I, I think, an increasing focus, what we're seeing with the launch of Open. Um, can, you, can you talk a little bit, sort of, like, sort of the commitment there, and, and why now? Why is, that, uh, why is this you know, so critically important at this point in time for Red Hat? Okay, well, the, the enablement right now is critically important because of, remember, moving from a two-by-three matrix, which you can manage with, you know, that's not really that difficult to do. But when you go to a six-by-six, six, you know, you, you have uh, sales capacity problems, you have technical expertise gaps. So enablement's critical because if we can't enlist an ecosystem and if we don't enable them, and we don't enable not only around the technology that we have, but around the initiatives that are out there with OpenStack and others, um, then, you know, candidly, they're not going to just do it. I mean, you have to give them a compelling reason. They have to know that Red Hat is going even beyond where we are. So as we fill out this portfolio, and I know you've talked to some partners, they're probably pretty excited that, you know, now we're filling out more of the puzzle. The mosaic is coming together. Uh, and one of the areas that we were behind, and we didn't put this enablement team in until April of, of the last year. So, you know, that was a gaping hole as we looked and said, if we're going from a two-by-three to a six-by-six six matrix on product and route, we have got to invest heavily in enablement and get everybody bought in, integrate them into, show them the roadmaps of where we're going, integrate them into really the fabric of the company. So it's, it was a priority last year, and it will be a priority this year, and we'll continue to invest in that area. All right. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Robert, thank you.